Hello everyone, this is Mr. Kazi coming to you from my virtual studios in beautiful Atascacita, Texas. And today I'm coming to you with another lesson on chemistry. And today's an exciting one because we're going to learn to do chemical nomenclature. And that's just a fancy way of saying we're going to learn to name the compounds. And I'm excited about this lesson because if you'll buy into my system, you don't have to memorize a whole bunch of names or a whole bunch of things to learn to name hundreds if not thousands of chemical names. All you have to do is learn a few simple processes and general rules and you'll be naming hundreds if not thousands of chemical compounds. So without further ado, let's get started. In this lesson, you will learn numeric prefixes, the non-metallic roots, common ions, polyatomic ions, and naming compounds. You will need, of course, a periodic table, unless you've memorized it, and that's great. And you will need a polyatomic ions table. And a little later in this lesson, I'll show you how you can get that if you don't have one. And you must know oxidation numbers, covalent compounds, ionic compounds, and the periodic table. This is kind of something we need to know so that we can name our chemicals properly. One of the first things that we need to know about is the common metallic roots. And you want to make some flashcards or something to learn these. And they're also going to be listed on the polyatomic ion cheat sheet that I put together. And uh, in a little bit, I'll show you how to get that, okay? But we want to be able to look at these. Here are the common uh, metallic roots. And you just kind of look at those. Really pay attention to the sulfur and the phosphorus. Uh, roots because really they're almost really not a root but the name and it used to be that they used sulf and phosph but I've never seen anything in the names that didn't use the full sulfur and phosphor. Our numeric prefixes are very important. Now remember we only use numeric prefixes with a uh, covalent compound but we need to know these. Okay so we have mono, di, tri, tetra, Penta, hexa, hepta, octa, nana, and deca. The common metallic ions. Now these aren't all of the metallic ions. There are more. I think I've even listed more on the cheat sheet. These are the most common ones that I use a lot. And so you will too. And the more you know about them, the better you're going to be at naming compounds. Polyatomic ions. Covalent bonded elements that act as a unit and have a charge. Now these are what I like to think of as elements that have come together and instead of being a compound, they think they're an element. And so they act as one unit and we treat them as one unit in most cases. Here's some examples, hydroxide ion, the carbonate ion, and the nitrate ion. And there are many more. And write this uh, down. If you need a common polyatomic ion sheet, a little cheat sheet I've put together, you can pick one up here at polyatomicions.pdf. Just copy this whole URL and put it into your browser and that'll take you there. And if that doesn't work, be sure to just send me an email at mrkazi at mrkazi.com. All right, general rule for naming compounds. Most compounds are binary, and that just means that they are two parts. And so that's our number one thing to be thinking about there. In this general rule, most compounds are binary. They're made up of two parts, water is hydrogen and oxygen, two parts. And even those with polyatomic ions, they're still really two parts. They're the polyatomic ion and the ion that they've attached to. So keep that in mind. And it's all just two parts. All right, let's name some ionic compounds. In naming ionic compounds, write the full name of the cation and use the root of the anion and add IDE. That's pretty easy. You just take the full name of the cation and then you take the root of the anion and then add IDE. Here's an example. Sodium and chlorine come together and make sodium. There's the cation, chloride. The charges of an ionic compound must balance to zero. Notice the sodium has a plus one and the chlorine has a negative one and plus one and negative one is zero. So we don't have to add any extras. They balance out perfectly. Voila. Metal ions with multiple charges. The oxidation numbers 
of the metal is indicated by a Roman numeral in parentheses. So some of those like copper, you have copper 1 or copper 2, and we designate the difference between them by using Roman numerals in their names. Examples, you have iron 2, which then means the 2 in the parentheses means it's a plus 2 charge, and that you just have to memorize that or look it up on your sheet. And then we have iron 3. It's really that simple. Copper 1, copper 2. Fe2O3, notice that the total charge on the oxygen is 3 times negative 2, which is negative 6. Remember now that the charges have to balance to 0. And so the iron, what's the iron going to be? Well, take negative 6 and divide it by 2, and we realize that that whole charge on the iron has to be plus 6. So divide plus 6 by 2 and get plus 3 and we have iron 3 oxide. Isn't that pretty simple? Polyatomic ions. Polyatomic ions are treated as a single unit and you must know the charge of the ion. And you see there, ammonium NH4 has a plus one charge. So NH4 is a plus one, ammonium. Carbonate is a negative two, they don't balance. So to uh, help balance it out, we make sure that we add two ammonium, notice that. We had two ammonium up there to make sure that it's balanced. Ammonium carbonate. All right, let's name covalent compounds. In naming uh, covalent compounds, and of course that's the same as molecular compounds, use the full name of the more metallic, followed by the root of the less metallic, and add IDE to the root. Use numeric prefixes to show how many. Now remember, we only use numeric prefixes on covalent compounds. With molecular compounds or the covalent compounds, we use numeric prefixes. As you go left to right, the compounds get less metallic. So the left side is me metallic and the right side is non-metallic. Keep that in mind. Carbon is more metallic, so we put carbon down. Oxygen is less metallic, so we have oxide. Notice we took the OX, that's the prefix of the oxygen, and we added IDE and carbon oxide. But there's two of them, so it's carbon dioxide. How about the next one? Can you name that before I put it up there? Nitrogen is the more metallic. Oxygen is the less metallic. But there are two nitrogen, dinitrogen, and there are four oxygen, so tetraoxide. Now note we drop the A. Whenever we end up with an A and an O next to each other, we usually drop the A. Practice time. Da, 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 da. All right, let's practice this. How about SF6? Did you get sulfur hexafluoride? Did you get lithium hydride? Very interesting about lithium hydride. This is a case where hydrogen is actually a negative instead of a positive charge. When hydrogen bonds with a metal, it takes on the anion instead of the cation. What about this one? Ammonium nitrate, two polyatomic ions coming together. Ammonium nitrate is a popular fertilizer. Now this one here, think about multiple charges for co copper. And so we get copper one sulfide. Now it's copper one because sulfur has negative two charge. Notice there's two coppers. If there's two coppers, that must mean that uh, copper only has a plus one charge. And here we have sodium carbonate. And again, we check our charges. Carbonate is a negative two. Sodium is a plus one, so we need two sodiums to balance out. Got to make sure they balance. All right, be sure to check out MrKazi.com for PowerPoint videos and much, much more. There's handouts and a lot of other good things there. And be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. There are about 22 videos there. Go check them out. And you all have a good day and happy ions.